And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Truck weather bulletin for August 5th. Well, here we are in the fifth day of the month, day 217, and we are now up to 47 storms so far this year with two depressions and two tropical storms, both in the same basins. Depressions 90 and Hilda in the Eastern Pacific, and of course, Lupit and W in the Western Pacific there. Going into the Atlantic, it's day 66 of Atlantic hurricane season, and we have quite the uh, development spree trying to go here. 91L died, but left behind is two other areas of formation. One that could enter the uh, Lesser Antilles, possibly, and that is a 20% chance. Another one in the Eastern Atlantic with a 40% chance. It's day 82 of Eastern Pacific hurricane season. We have Hilda, which is weakening almost remnant low. 9E, which has resurrected into a tropical depression. And then, of course, the AOI off of Mexico is up to a 50% chance. And the Central Pacific AOI now at 20%. In the Western Pacific, we have uh, Tropical Storm Lupid, which got designated uh, yet last night after the Tropical Weather Bulletin. About to make landfall in China. 15W is also present, and we are giving 14W an 80% chance of becoming a TD by our analysis. And the North Indian Ocean is all quiet here, nothing much going on. The only basin in the Northern Hemisphere not uh, streaming with activity at this point. Thankfully that is going to be something that stays. Of course we did have that land depression that dissipated over India not too long ago. Here's the Atlantic satellite imagery. Can't really see much uh, in terms of what we have presently, but you can kind of see uh, what could become that area of interest for the Caribbean there. And then that tropical wave that is currently in Africa, that is going to be something that we may have to watch in the coming days. In the Easter Pacific, you can quite clearly see how Hilda is not doing uh, very well at all. 9E, however, has been organizing rather well the last few days. It's still got a bit of an elongated center, but it is getting there, and it is likely that does become a tropical storm, albeit short-lived. In the Western Pacific, you can see the three systems that we have designated there right now. Uh, 14W doesn't exactly look like a tropical cyclone, that's why we haven't given it the TC status yet. Uh, Lupit is about to make landfall, and then of course there is 15W to the uh, right side of your screen there. Uh, that will be continuing to pass in north and will stay out of Japan's way. Save cannot be said about uh, uh, 14W though. In the North Indian Ocean, we're still looking at nothing much going on. Every uh, shred of evidence of that land depression is practically gone at this point. Uh, and now, of course, we're left back with our normal monsoonal activity there. Zooming in onto those two systems on the left there, Lupit is the one that is getting closer to China. And then, of course, uh, 14W, uh, that we still have a disturbance that could become a tropical storm as it passes either directly over or just south of Japan. And so that is something that Japan needs to be watching as well as China with Lupin. Here are the sea surface temperatures in the eastern Pacific. We have uh, 30 degrees Celsius waters that are pretty much taking over the Gulf of California and the coastal waters of Mexico. The Gulf of Mexico, almost the entire region is under 30 degrees Celsius at this point. Main development region still looking around 27 to 28 degrees Celsius. Same can be said about the Gulf Stream and as you head south of Bermuda. Moving on over into the North Indian Ocean here. Uh, those waters remain a little bit cooler than it has been the last few weeks. 28 to 29 degrees Celsius in the Bay of Bengal. However, much of the basin in the Arabian side of things is around 27 or below. In the Western Pacific, there's less splotches of 30 degrees Celsius than there has been. However, they are still pretty much in the more prominent places like the South China Sea, as well as portions of the Philippine Sea. Most of those warmer waters are down south near the equator, which of course cyclones really can't develop there. Regardless, 28 to 29 degrees Celsius is definitely an acceptable environment for TCs. So here we are with the sea surface temperature anomaly, the Sea of Japan, and the subtropics in general remaining extremely warm and much above average. Those enso neutral conditions continuing. The Western Pacific is looking a little bit cooler than normal. And then, of course, the Atlantic is the one with the warmest waters of them all compared to normal. On this day in 2004, Hurricane Alex was a Category 3 as it passed near or west of Bermuda. Uh, it would basically race off and become extra tropical about two days later. 
Bonnie had decayed into a remnant low, however, it would re-strengthen back into a tropical storm eventually, later hitting Florida. Morant T was an out-to-sea tropical storm slash typhoon, and Malu was weakening as it entered the Sea of Japan. Of course, this is powered by Cyclone History. You can find them in our Twitter below. Well, with that said, here are the next names in the Atlantic. It's Fred followed by Grace. In the Eastern Pacific, it is Humana followed by Kevin. And in the Central Pacific, we have the AOI. It's just a matter of whether we'll be singing, I wanna be, I wanna be, I wanna be Hone. Total drama reference, if you get it, you get it, if you don't, oh well. In the Western Pacific, it's Marine followed by Nita next, there. And in the North Indian Ocean, we're awaiting for Gulab and Shaheen, two names we're probably not going to be seeing for the near future. Moving on to the Southern Hemisphere side of things, the next name in the Southwest Indian Ocean is Anna followed by Batsire. In the Australian region, we're looking up for Patty, and in the South Pacific, it's Cody. I'll be back for another Tropical Weather Bulletin tomorrow night.